Ladies and gentlemen, Foo Fighters. Dave Grohl has been in two of the biggest and most successful rock bands of all time. First off, dominating the 90s with Nirvana. He's the guy from Nirvana? And releasing one of the biggest rock albums of all time. Later going on to form Foo Fighters, that even 30 years later are still one of the biggest rock bands in the world. <laughs> releasing 11 full-length studio albums with massive songs like The Pretender, My Hero, Best of You, I've got another confession to make. All My Life, Times Like These, and many more. To say they've had a successful run is kind of an understatement. But let's look at their biggest song of all time, Everlong. We're going to see how they recorded the song, what makes it so great and stand out all these years later, and take a look at replicating the amazing guitar tones on this track. There's a reason this song is so big, from its amazing growl fuel drum parts, classic punk inspired bass tones, Thick boy guitar parts. Let's dive right into it. The song opens with one of the most memorable guitar parts of the 90s. A simple drop D chord progression grabs the listener instantly with its unique tone and chord voicings. This very part was played on Dave's Gibson RD through a blonde Fender Time Master head and the boogie cap. Turning the guitar down to get the clean sound. To get that lo-fi sound, a very unusual microphone was used to record this part, a Aesthetic JT40, which gives the guitar intro its instantly recognizable sound. To replicate this, you basically need a great clean style amp with some Gibson humbuckers. For that, I'm using my old Silverface Twin and an ES335, not too far away from Dave's beloved Trini Lopez guitars. Production-wise, the rest of the song is quite simple. Powerful, classic rock production works perfectly here and lets all the instruments shine apart from each other. But now let's look at the fantastic overdriven guitar sounds. Funnily enough, it's the same exact setup and sound he used for the clean parts, just with the guitar volume turned all the way up so the amp is driven. While second guitarist Pat Smear is using his famous Hagstrom guitar running through what is referred to as Cobain's live rig, a Mesa Boogie preamp through a Crown 1000 watt power amp into a Marshall cab, which incidentally apparently sounded really good but was constantly blowing the speakers out of the cab. Pat's guitars are on the right of the stereo image and Dave's are on the left. Pat's guitar part is much more mid-focused, which totally complements the sound of Dave's Fender Tone Master Drive sound. To replicate this, I've used my twin as a clean amp and the new hard drive distortion from JHS pedals. I chose this because it has a really flexible mid-range EQ set that could help me get much closer to those classic crunchy guitar parts. I'm actually using the exact same settings for all guitar parts, but I'm using a 335 for Dave's parts and a Les Paul Custom for Pat's parts, just to separate the rhythm tracks a little bit and help them complement each other further. Blend them together and you can instantly achieve that awesome Everlong guitar tone. <laughs> So there we have it, replicating Foo Fighters' best and biggest song. Really, it's all about getting the crunch time right, as pretty much any humbucker through a clean guitar amp will give you that classic intro part. 
but having the hard drive by jhs to give us that classic amp like crunch slash distortion really came in handy especially with the eq section so that i could scoop out the mids a little bit to get that bit much closer to the original song but let me know what songs you'd like me to do next down in the comments and i'll see you next time Get out of here.